You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. Welcome to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now all right hello night nation hello orlando this is andrew fagley live from the dever team studios this is nightline at night brought to you by chad bar law assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve give chad a call 407-599-9036 for a uh to or visit protectingvets.com i (laughs) almost did the old one uh so protectingvets.com uh check that out please and and get a hold of him you can also call travis dever for all your new smyrna beach real estate needs 386-690-1636 but all those other phone numbers were taking your calls as well. 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326. Or you can use the open mic feature on the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley, AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me. Got Chase in the studio. Uh, ben Stout's uh, social media at Big Social 32, and you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. <sighs> you made it through. Made it through, kind of. <laughs> made it through the I, intro. I, I messed it up a little <laughs> bit, but I usually do, so that's all right. Uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about tonight. There's no UCF sports action going whatsoever. No. After the Olympic trials uh, ended for our our, our lovely Renia Jones, uh, we, yeah. we kind of don't have any sports going on. By the way, out. by the way, I'm just going to say this off the top before people turn it off. She did an awesome job. Amazing. And I put out a little thing on Twitter the other night on the Nightline uh, Twitter, and that is UCF underscore Nightline. Um and and just said, you know, you've got this next Olympics. The next Olympics are yours. No doubt. You know, so it's awesome as a freshman, redshirt freshman uh, mm-hmm. given, but but still uh, very young uh, and, and did a great job. She had to be tired at that yeah. point because she had competed in the NCAA championships. Then another week out there in Oregon, away from home, That's away right. from family, all that stuff. And then she had run in what eight races in the in the last two weeks. Yeah, the week. So be- she had to be tired. The week before the NCAA's, of course, she's in the yeah. conference uh, championships, which she won. At of the course. end of the season, this yeah. extends your season. She had to be tired. And, and they and they talked about that a lot. I've been watching these Olympic trials because I'm getting excited for the Olympics, and they've been talking about that a lot. How the uh, college athletes in uh, track and field, especially, you know, since they had they were out there in Oregon the week before week prior, you know, they did have tired legs. But she that first qualifying heat on I believe Thursday night last week, she certainly didn't show any tired legs. She uh, she almost she was leading almost the whole race, and it was a it was a hundredth of a second that she placed in second to to make the semifinal finals which were on sunday night and so so she just did a fantastic job she she did herself proud she did night nation proud and uh, and i agree with you andrew i think next olympics she's got this i'm extremely excited about the olympics i yeah. don't i don't know if the rest of you are out there as excited as, as you're excited Yeah, it's gonna be awesome um you know we missed it's off a year because we missed that uh, they're going to have some fans there, I guess 10,000 in each venue or something, which mm. is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, so at least, you know, they're going to get to have that. This is, you know, it's obviously not an American thing, but it's, it's a tradition. It's a, it's a world tradition of sports Absolutely. to do this. It is the greatest amateur athletes that there are. Uh, it means a ton for those athletes. Mm-hmm. It means a ton. There's athletes that were trying to get into the Olympics for last year that had to wait a year to try. There's Olympics uh, people that that were in it the last time and had to wait even longer. Right. You know, there's a bunch of guys that didn't get in. Yeah. So, yeah, big deal. Uh, And I can't wait. I, I 
love the Olympics, winter or or summer. I think I like winter a little bit better, to be honest. Do you really? I like I'm, the skiing I'm a summer stuff. guy all yeah, the way. I'm, there is some cool stuff. You, well, basketball is in the summer. Well, so. basketball is, it, but I mean, I love the track and the swimming is awesome. I mean, even gymnastics is cool. I mean, there's there's a, there's a lot of cool things in the summer Olympics that I enjoy a little bit more than the winter. But there is some cool things in winter too. Are the martial arts in the winter or the summer? That would be summer. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. but I'm excited about that because I I really want to watch that stuff yeah. and the boxing and all that stuff. I, I think boxing in the Olympics is probably fair. Boxing outside <laughs> of the Olympics is not fair, uh, I, and I believe fixed most of the time. And <laughs> I'm sure some of you will argue with me about that, but that's my early uh, hot take for <laughs> yeah. the evening. I don't, I don't know if I agree the, with that one <laughs> so much. But, well, I, th- I think it's totally fixed most of the oh. time. Personally, we can agree to disagree on that. Okay. Well, we can argue about it. It's what, the radio show is for us to argue. No, but it's all but good. Jace, get... what's your opinion on that, my man? <laughs> Welcome back, by the way, to Nightline at Night. I'm just, existence is pain right now. <laughs> like, and this is for, like, I know this isn't UCF, but it's Orlando related. What the heck, Orlando Magic? Yeah. Like, if you could at least just get a top four even, I'd be I okay just, with that. Just heard the news as I sat down here. With, I have uh, no Andrew. idea what y'all are talking about. So. Uh, the Orlando Magic had, had uh, as Who? good a chance. The, yeah, the Orlando Magic right. had as good a chance There's as a anybody. There's a team called the Magic? Yes, that's right. What do they do? They're an NBA team. Really? Yes. We have an NBA team? Hey, chill out. <laughs> one of my favorite NBA so much team, right? rude over here. Orlando had an NBA team. Yeah. Really. Uh, yeah, you're oh like, gosh. It's interesting. You and, just woke uh, up today and chose violence, didn't you? Yes, he did. He chose violence. I'm always um, attacking but, us. We're not USF fans. We just said we're Orlando Magic Exactly, fans. right? <laughs> exactly. But oh, anyways, the, uh, they, they got they got they, they had a, as good a chance of any other team in the NBA to get the number one pick, and they got the number five pick. So that's not great. every time. Yeah, I, yep. it's just bad. I luck. mean, you know, I, I read that every time you know, <laughs> you read. but, but I, I i have noticed that every time that they have the chance to get the and it's a lottery or something dumb like yep. that right the same yeah, way we like play NFL, three yeah. it's, it's also why don't they settle. just let the worst team in the league have the first pick uh well i believe i don't know exactly what what year the uh draft lottery started but uh, there was a series of years where the tanking was like a really big prevalent thing uh. um, and, and and you know it's ironic because tanking still happens a lot in the nba uh today but um certainly that was that that became a really prevalent thing and i think that was their solution i wonder how it, many people shut, work shut out. the show off after i said <laughs> what i said there <laughs> Well, I mean, no, this I is mean, a UCF show. You didn't start like praising the cows, so you're good there. Oh, the who? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ah. There you go. Okay, well, that's twice tonight. Uh, <laughs> We're working on a record here, folks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's a bummer um, that that happens, and, and it, it's, it's probably fixed too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, there, it yeah, seems there's an like for it that is. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, there, there's a lot of fixed stuff. Uh, speaking of fixed. We did have some NCAA uh, Supreme Court news yes. this week, yeah. um, and that either way y- you could look at that, and it's either good or bad. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not totally sure. I mean, uh, I thought you were going to talk about the possibility of a 12 team playoff well yeah we've been talking about that for the last couple weeks but the supreme court unanimously decides with former college players in a dispute with the ncaa about compensation and i don't totally know what all that means but i i think that they it's more it's more they they defined it as educational benefits right which right. which you know has there to was be a tied limit. to your education at some uh, in some way there but, was a limit on that yeah right so yeah, I, I don't know about a dollar limit. I don't know if they defined it that far, but they did say the value of your education. Okay. So does this mean that you can just pay college athletes whatever you want to now, and the big schools that make all the money, the 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 Power Five schools, can pay their players anything they want? I mean, essentially, it means that like there's no longer any you know true regulation on. 
you know, the entire student athlete population at a certain school because they have the money and they want to provide the resources, resources in quotes, you know, that all of them get, I, you know, IMAX. So basically, you know, every single student athlete at Alabama gets IMAX, you know, like that, you know, there's nothing. It basically says that there's less regulation on that. Uh, it's my understanding of it. And I haven't read a, a, up on it, you know, tremendously done a ton of research. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you they all can get Lamborghinis. Both of us being former college athletes, mm-hmm. uh, I don't. We haven't talked about this for a while, and I don't know if I've ever asked you. Mm-hmm. Were you upset when you were a college athlete that you weren't being paid? No, no, yeah, that wasn't. I mean, was I that mean, a thought that even went through your head? No, I should it, be paid for this. No, at that time, it was. It was. It was. Go, going to college and 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 playing for a college team you was were always just excited my goal. To do that, yeah, that right? was my goal. Is is actually the, the you know getting the were education. You a walk-on? Yeah, I was a walk on. Okay, yeah, I so, was a walk on too. Yeah. I got a scholarship my senior right. year, but it didn't pay for very much. I can tell you that that scholarship. Yeah. Um. I, I never even thought about getting paid. Right. It never crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. So I know that there's a lot of you know players out there that you know and we're we're coming up on July 1st and the name and likeness thing i still i still don't agree with that i i just don't i mean i understand some of it i mean yes they're making some money off of off of the players but that's how ath- that's how it works mm-hmm. kind of you know what i'm saying i mean i don't know i i, I just i'm worried that there's going to be you know, certain schools are going to get certain players because they can get them a better deal mm-hmm. for for a sponsorship. And then that sooner or later, we're going to have logos all over jerseys. Remember the UFC when it started and the, the shorts that the, the shorts guys had wore? They had, them, yeah. they had advertising all over them. You couldn't even tell what color they were. Yeah. Well, I think also think about it like this, though. Look at Orlando as a market. Look at UCF as a whole, how it has a whole bunch of money now. Like, you could, yeah, you could be essentially paying players. But also, UCF can be affording some of those players. Because I remember when I worked over in UCF Not Athletics. as many as Alabama can. Well, I mean, I mean, to be fair, let's ask the question of, would you rather make more money or make less money and live in Alabama? Like, that's the, <laughs> that's the key thing. Like, who actually wants to live in Alabama by choice without, like, some form of compensation? But that's neither here nor there. Like, I just remember when I worked at UCF, it was the year that Marcus Jordan joined, and his face was everywhere. Yeah. Literally. Like, we kept promoting, hey, by the way, Michael Jordan's kid is playing for us. And it felt a little slimy just to say that a little bit, but, like, just the fact that, hey, if my face is being plastered everywhere, I'm kind of going to want some of that money. And I don't know if that's me being crazy or whatnot, but now – they can have the ability to be financially compensated for some of this and build yeah, the and, brand and, uh, out early. We we don't have enough time to get it, get into it in this segment, but since we're talking about this, uh, UCF uh, Athletics did just announce something pretty big, in my opinion, on their on their website uh, called the 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 launch program, essentially UCF launch. Um, and there's and there's essentially ten points that they talk about to directly to the student athlete as to why UCF would be a great choice for you within within the context of the uh, name, image, and likeness legislation that's coming through. So we can talk about that at a, a little a little later in the show. But it it kind of provides how UCF is on the front edge of this of this kind of thing. They're 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 being proactive instead of reactive, and so it's pretty exciting. I hope so. I mean, I just don't want to see college uniforms have 10 logos on them for what the guy has the sponsorship for. Yeah, and I'm with you on that. And I actually have a have a different take on this. And I know that we're, we're running up against it, so I can save it for the next segment. But I have a, I have a little bit different angle that, that people aren't taking as often uh, with the name, image, and likeness that I, I want to be able to discuss. Okay, well, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to a lot more. Um, We'll take your calls, by the way, if you want to call us and talk to us about any of these topics. If you want to call and trash me because I trashed the the magic, it's all good. We're going to take that break. We'll be right back on Nightline at Night.
an auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach, your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach, proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night, I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law. Taking your calls, 844-580-9326. Got Big Ben Stout with me. Roger Phipps joins us as well at Night Bingle. Uh, ben Stout's at Big Social 32. We got Chase on here. Chase Bunker as well in the studio. We got all kinds of stuff uh, going on. Not a lot going on in UCF athletics at this point. Uh, it was a Summer big, is here. <laughs> yeah, pretty big recruiting weekend. We we can talk a little bit about that if we want to, but I think the real hot topic is this uh, the launch program. Especially you mentioned it earlier, but the the launch of this whole uh, name, image, and likeness thing that's about to take over college sports. Yeah, uh, and in a way, it kind of worries me a, a couple of ways. Um, uh, it worries me that, that schools, I, I wonder who's actually regulating this. Number one, the NCAA just lost a Supreme court battle with, with former college athletes. Uh, are, are there rules on how this can happen or is that left up to the States is it left up to the schools? I Who's be- regulating? Well, this? I believe as part of the court decision that the NCAA would be the arbiter and um, and and the and the enforcer of the rules. Um, that's is that... there a rule book? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. where are the rules for this? I haven't seen any rules, and it's supposed to start in, in, on the first. I, I think name, image, and likeness, and the Supreme Court decision are are yes, they're related, but they're well, they're, but they're 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 not a, they're not exactly. Yeah. The, the Supreme Court decision was was about it. My understanding was about edu- what they what they defined as educational benefits, right? So it allowed it allowed more, um, or I should say, less regulation on on what uh, is student considered... athletes. Yeah, receiving gifts that are related to their education. Um, and, 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 well, I mean, student athletes have been paid for, uh, you know, have been not paid, but excuse me. Some uh, of them have been. Well, yeah, but not within the rules, not within the rules. But, um, I I meant to say they're like grad school has been, you know, they, they've received scholarships for grad schools. Uh, you know, there's that plenty, that happens plenty today, but there's more expansion of that now, as far as uh, study abroad programs, um, you know, uh, educational related items such as computers or um, or anything else. Now, one thing that is interesting that comes into play here is, is Title IX is always going to be in existence, right? So this isn't a college football thing. This isn't a college basketball thing. If the entire college football team at Alabama is going to get an iPad because they feel like it'll help with their education, that means that the women's volleyball team needs to get that too. Absolutely. Um, there, there, it's, it's, so that is certainly in play as well. Uh, one thing that I'll say on the name image and likeness that I did want to bring up that not too many people bring up on this topic is and 
do you want to hang on to yeah, that? Yeah, maybe I'll the, hang the on to that segment? one. Yeah, because I didn't realize we. This, yeah, this, this segment this is, is so short. It's so short that that we get going on something and uh, you know we don't really get to finish it. So, but yeah, that was my limited understanding of the uh, of the Supreme Court decision. That was more about these educational benefits, which I totally understand will be will be taken advantage of by multiple schools across the country. Um, but that's uh, my concern. Yes, because. Uh, you know, there's certain programs out there that have, I mean, SMU got the death penalty years ago for paying, yeah, that's, you know, I mean, it broke up a conference and I what mean, they a, do, a very powerful conference. And what itself. they did yeah. happens all the time now. <laughs> yes. Happens all the time. Slaps Doesn't get wrist. reported. Everybody else gets slaps on the wrist. But I mean, that was a huge deal back. I think that happened in the eighties, right? Yeah. Early eighties, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there's going to be schools that that take advantage or or disadvantage of the rest of the schools, and there's already such a pair. Uh, uh, not not the right word, but there's already such difference between the Power Five schools and the non Power Five schools. I feel like this, with their resources, is this is going to widen the gap even more. Unfortunately, potentially, so, yeah. With that, it it is certainly. You know, all of a sudden they're spending money on different things. That, so it, it, it could be interesting. Right. All right. Well, I mean, I, I worry about all that stuff just just because the gap is, is way too large. Uh, and that's, that gap somehow needs to become smaller, I believe, for, you know, certain teams, certain conferences to be able to uh, survive, to be honest with you. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back on Nylon and Night. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have, everything from wild to mild in there, absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats, Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain? Or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night, I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw, assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, or visit protectingvets.com. 
Uh, Chad does a lot of stuff besides that as well. So if you have uh, issues with a slip, a fall, uh, any kind of thing that you would want to call a lawyer about, he can probably help you out or find somebody that can. So 407-599-9036, and uh, Chad will take care of you, I promise. Uh, you can also give Chad, uh, Travis Dever a call for uh, all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. We're taking your calls, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326. Or you can use the open mic feature on the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley. AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32. And got Roger Phipps at Night Bingle from the Santa Rosa Beach Studios. We also have Chase Bunker, the Chase Bunker, in the <laughs> studio tonight with us. And you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com, including podcasts and more. All right. Uh, we're talking UCF stuff. Uh, not a lot of UCF stuff to talk about tonight, so we're talking... Kind of, we we got into the whole name, image, likeness thing in the first part of the show. Uh, so I want to continue on that. But first, we have Andrew from Oviedo on the phone. He may have something else we can talk about because yeah. he he normally comes up with good topics for us. Andrew, my friend, what's going on tonight? Doing well, guys. How about yourself? We're what's doing. Up, what's on your well, mind? I know, uh, well, I'm going to continue the debate on football because I know you guys are going to have a whole spiel of this, but I was kind of curious. This has been pondered probably for the past decade, but what's your thought on the bounce house being expanded with college football games in terms of attendance has gone down at least the past six, seven years, and with the influx of more technology, people able to see it at home, and more people looking for an experience versus an ex- the sheer size of the stadium, do you see the stadium actually being expanded within the next seven years within the next seven years i'm not sure about the next seven years i would like to see it expanded i'd like to see it seat at least sixty thousand personally but uh there does need to be a little bit more of an experience as well out there and they've done pretty well with the concerts and stuff i i don't know if they're doing anything like that this year they should uh, i thought that that was pretty cool and having all the stuff on the outside of the stadium going on uh, our entertainment when we go, and you well know this, is our tailgate. Uh, and that's our real entertainment. Inside the stadium, there's no entertainment except for the football game. Mm-hmm. For the people that don't want to, you know, watch the football game, you know, there's people. There's kids. There's wives. There's some dads, I'm sure, that don't <laughs> even want to watch. So I'll be, I'll be equal there. <laughs> but um, there does need to be an experience. There is a little bit with the the different clubs and stuff like that, but I think they should, you know, if they do expand, they need to put a whole level in between uh, of something like that, you know, build a actual concourse where there's, you know, maybe air conditioning would be awesome if if they could build an enclosed concourse instead of just the bottom that's not enclosed and and there's no real relief from anywhere, except if you're lucky enough to have uh you know, tickets for the, the tower, you got air conditioning, right. uh, you know, so uh, all those things would be nice, but, but we need to actually have the fan base to fill it as well. And I think that we're gaining on that a lot more. It seems like that UCF football is pretty much sold out for the, the year, uh, especially season tickets. Um, but it gets, it gets pretty packed in there too. When, right. when there are games that a bunch of people want to see. And, and I don't know if, you know, 2017 on that, that, uh, black Friday game, I don't know if there were people outside that couldn't get in because it was packed. I mean, right. it was, I can't say on the radio, my, my normal, you know, thing that I, that I say how packed it was, but uh, you're up to your elbows. <laughs> yeah. We'll say that with people. Um, and it, it's a great feeling, but then again, now, uh, people want to spread out a little bit more. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I, I got a couple of things on this. Uh, first, uh, for, to answer your initial question, uh, do I see expansion of our stadium? Like, like, like you said, Andrew, up to, up to 60,000, maybe, you know, another deck or something, right? Do I see that in the next seven years? Uh, in a word, no, I don't see that happening. 
Um, but what I do see is uh, a lot more expansion within the stadium on more premium seating options. This is something that our um, AD, Terry Mahajer, has talked a lot about is uh, how do we get more bang for the buck um, or or more bucks, I guess, in his case of, of how do we get more dollars out of the stadium? How do we monetize more things out of the stadium? And so I can see a lot more expansion within the stadium uh, for premium seating. So I actually think that that probably brings the number of capacity down. Um, so we could potentially see the bounce house go from whatever it is right now, which is right around 45,000, I believe, down, uh, you know, a thousand or so. Uh, to make room for this. But what I what I would like to see, um, probably more than anything, um, is I you mentioned it, I'd I'd love a second level concourse. Um, you know, the ability to go not have to go all the way down three flights of stairs uh, to go uh and I, or I'm kind a of in, concourse. Uh, yeah, or yeah. Well, a, a concourse on <laughs> the, the on the upper level. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and I'm I I sit in the family pack seats. I, I sit in the cheap seats myself. So uh, I wouldn't mind not having to walk down three flights of stairs to go get a drink or uh, whatever. Yeah. Roger, yeah, would here you, in the stadium would be great. Would too. you like to say something? You've been here for half of the show and have not said a word yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are doing a great job talking about the the topics at hand. Uh, to Andrew's question, though, uh, from my perspective, I tend to agree within that time frame, that seven year time frame. I don't see it happening either, uh, just simply because uh, there's nothing that's going to give us uh, a additional funds or funds injection uh, to cause us to do that. There, there was originally in the plans a 20 or I think it was a 10,000 seat deck um, that was in the original expansion plans for the bounce house. However, um, one of the things that's, uh, you know, we'd have to sell out the bounce house for five or seven years for them to consider expanding it mm -hmm. in the current environment that we have. Um, we, we've had a few sellouts. We had our first one um, a couple of years ago, COVID hit. We all know how that went. Um, we're, we're tracking towards that again this year, but we have to show that consistently before that happens. Now here's the wild card on that seven year itch. Uh, if for some odd reason that we don't know right now that the the conference expansion wheels start turning and we end up in another conference like the Pac-12 or I'm sorry, the Big 12 or the ACC, then I could see us doing that one because we have the injection of cash Two, I think that we would attract more of Orlando's non UCF fans to just come watch the game. And I think at that point, I do think that that would happen. But then again, within another 15 years or so, we're going to be looking at uh, completely redoing our stadium anyway. So do you save the cash and wait till then? I think we should do it before we get, I mean, I, I think it would almost be a requirement that they would, I mean, do that before if, if we were to go with expansion and to go into a different, uh, conference it might be part of the commitment that the other schools would, would ask yeah, of us. I would to think have that that more, would need to be done first. Yeah, more seats in the Personally, stadium. Yeah, um, you possibly. can't beat that. You can't beat that. Uh, it's not not necessarily a fan experience, but that how loud our stadium is just it's with insane. that forty. It's just, I mean, and other schools talk about it. School, uh, I remember, I think it was O'Leary that said that uh, the the big uh, what do they call the they call it the big house right up in uh, Ohio State was like the quietest like you know hundred thousand in the shoe. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the yeah. that's the horseshoe. Yeah, excuse me. The big house is Michigan. I <laughs> it's believe. Michigan. Yeah. yeah, I think I think O'Leary called the the horseshoe the the quietest hundred thousand uh, seat stadium he's ever been in. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, it can be especially especially when uh, the, the team that's not supposed to win is is winning. You know, yeah. uh, at a place like the horseshoe. One of the things that Roger talk, uh, touched on real quick um, that I that I certainly agree with is is the is the point about sellouts. You know, we've had feverish you know uh, support for UCF um, on social media, and we're getting our national respect and all that over ever since uh, early 2017. But what we what we um, 
you know, what we haven't done much is actually sell out the whole stadium and and have consistent like, you know, attendance at these games. That's true. And and I, I always joke around that I'm 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 one losing season away from like being able to like move up my seats, you know, easily because a lot of people are gonna jump off this ship. I hope I'm wrong on that, but experience tells me, you know, being around UCF since the early two thousands that there's a chance that that could happen. So Uh, Hopefully we don't experience the losing season, but we also have a very fickle fan base in a city that has a lot of other stuff that they can do on a Saturday afternoon. And I will, I will say I enjoy watching football from home. I enjoyed it last season. I did. Although I really love tailgating and, and, you know, watching the game in the stadium and cheering and screaming. And I mean, I'll go to work the next day on Monday and, and you know, the two days after and not really have a voice. Yeah. Y'all have heard me on nightline, the podcast many times, not having a voice after coming from the games. But then again, I, you can see much better on, on watching on TV. Of course you can. They put that big uh, video board in the stadium, one of the, lo- the largest in any college football stadium. Uh, at the time, I think it was the second or something like that. That was a big deal, and that helps uh, different views inside mm-hmm. the stadium, replays and all that stuff. Uh, I know, though, that people you know, are enjoying more and more being able to stay home in their air conditioning you know, with as many beers as they want next to them you know, uh, and watching – Football on TV. Having so. experienced almost a full season of that for most college football fans last year, it will be interesting to see how much of that you know experience they missed of, right. the, of actually being there, or how much they you know didn't didn't really don't really want to go away from home again. Well, if if you if you don't watch football on TV and you just go to games a lot of times and and then you watch it on TV, you're, you're like, man, this yeah. is like it's really <laughs> clear. There's replays. They they talk about you know. I mean, it's just it's completely completely different. And, you know, I, I love both atmospheres mm-hmm. uh, of watching football. So uh, I watch all the games back again, right? Uh, you know, the next day or whatever, or sometimes that night it just depends on what the timing of the whole thing is. But I record everyone and watch them back to, to be able to see those replays and to see what happened that I maybe missed in the stadium, you know, not, you know, having the greatest angle of view. Exactly. The best seats sometimes are not the ones with the greatest view, believe it or not. <laughs> so anyway. I have neither myself. But. <laughs> uh, Andrew, I don't know if you're still there, but uh, great call again. Really appreciate it. You always make us think and uh, get something else started. So uh, we're getting tight again. So I don't know if we're going to get to cover that whole name image likeness thing as much as I wanted to. Real quick though, we've got like a couple minutes yeah. here. Do you want to, Can you yeah, say can what you wanted quick. to say? Yeah, I can make it quick. I just think one of the aspects of the name, image, and likeness that a lot of people aren't talking about is the student athlete aspect of where they could actually get themselves in a bit of trouble uh, with a three three letter agency called the IRS. Now, a lot of a lot of these. Um, you know, a lot of 18 year olds to 24 year olds in college, they don't understand, uh, you know, uh, the, the tax ramifications of, of anything. Right. But you got these student athletes that are going to be traveling the country and, and I don't know how each school is going to have to really figure out how they're going to play this, but say, you know, a Dylan Gabriel, for instance, is we're going, you're going on the road. We're playing Cincinnati. We arrive two days early and he sets up an autograph session where he's going to get $3,000 to sign 50 autographs graphs or whatever is he gonna uh, you know when it comes tax time is how's he gonna how's he gonna um you know uh, mo- you know make sure that the irs is going to come try to grab you know if like they're a tax true business, for that three thousand yeah, dollars i mean true this is business they're gonna have to do uh you know the the uh, monthly or or quarterly tax payments and this is the thing that if out if, out if colleges are trying to adapt to the nil uh, you know uh, the new age of college football they're going to have to provide resources for these student athletes to actually help them which is we, we don't have enough time to go over over the launch program but uh, which is what excites me to see that you know they're going to teach them something about business exactly yes. teach them about something about business but also help them manage that um that what they're going into which is a new frontier or at least it should be for all of these terry mahajer the ad at ucf that was one of the very first things that he said that he wanted to do when he came to ucf was help 
the the students, exactly. student athletes get jobs, number one, and you know know how to manage their money and and be able to do things in the future. For so. Sure. All right, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back on Nightline at Night. We'll come back with the Tijuana Flats uh, Hot Take of the Week. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Welcome to this is a promo for the Take a Left at Albuquerque podcast new to the Nightline Sports Network. You should listen to it. I say things like this. We need to stop blaming Jerry because we would do the exact same thing if we owned the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Do you know how much fun it is to own the Dallas Cowboys? My guests will say things sometimes like uh, this. It's, it's the Lord of the Flies thing that happens when they don't understand that things are wrong spoiler alert until piggy dies yeah. um Lord it, it, of the flies has been out for like it, like 100 years it, like, it, i don't it, even know yeah it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry sorry to everyone at home yeah. who i spoiled the book for a book's been out for like 90 years or something and sometimes rarely though i'll say really stupid things like this if they don't make it out of the west and the raptors get to the finals I will go on either this show or whoever show and say that Kawhi Leonard is overrated. I just because I have too much evidence of it. New episodes drop every Friday with me and some of my good friends right here on the Nightline Sports Network. And now back to Nightline at Night on WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night. I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw. Got Big Ben Stout here with me, Roger Phipps, Chase Bunker in the studio. And you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. Here we go with the uh, Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Welcome to the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Visit TijuanaFlats.com for takeout or delivery, or visit your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. Ben, you want to start us off tonight with your Tijuana Flats? I I ate Tijuana Flats tonight, by the way. It was awesome. Had a megawana. It was awesome. They're awesome. I need to get back there soon. Um, yeah, so uh, it'd be short tonight. I, I think that Dylan Gabriel is going to be in New York for the Heisman uh, Trophy uh, ceremony this year. I, I'm not going to go as far to say he's going to win it, but he's been posting a lot on social media about he just loves his uh, – he seems to really have a great relationship already with G.J. Kenny, I th- and, and obviously Gus is guiding him. I, I, think, I think this is going to be a stellar year for uh, – Dylan Gabriel, he's going to wind up in New York. Awesome. Good one. Uh, Roger. All right. So for me, I'm going to say that UCF will schedule and play a Pac-12 team in the next two years. In football? Football. Okay. Chase, you got one? I have no information to back this, (laughs) but I think UCF football goes undefeated this year. Awesome. I like the sound of that. I, like that. I think uh, looking at their schedule, if they, I think Boise State is going to be tough, and then Cincinnati is going to be tough, but after that, I think they can actually go undefeated. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. Real quick, mine, uh, and I've, I think I've used this one before, but I'm, I'm going to use it again just because I, I really couldn't come up with one. <laughs> uh, UCF will have the defensive player of the year in the American this year. And I've said that I, I thought you know, someone would be, but, and I've given names before, but I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that they will have the defensive player of the year. I'm not, who knows who it could be. It could be a, a number of people, but I think that that's a big deal for UCF though, because our defense is, has been not the greatest for the last couple of years. I just think the defense is, is really going to surprise people this year. Uh, and a couple of players in particular. Uh, and, and if you've listened to me long enough, you know who those are. <laughs> 
<laughs> for sure. But, uh, you know. We're, Defense we're... going to be much improved this year. There's no doubt about that. So, Chase, uh, you are getting a uh, kind of a promotion kind of deal, and you're, you're moving soon. Yes. Um, congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Uh, do you think you're going to be you're you're going to be able to make it back for that uh, UCF Boise game, right? I'm going to try to. I uh, I have I, hope. I originally had every intention to go to that to see Boise State play. Um, I'm going to I'm going to try to because right now, for those who do not know, I am going to be moving to Jacksonville in July to become a reporter. So unfortunately, my hot takes here are going to be much more minimal, but. <laughs> I will try to figure out a way to just like break past security and just be like, "Hey, by the way, this is what needs to happen." And just <laughs> well, you're welcome on this show, show anytime. You know that. I appreciate it. You know you're welcome on the oh. show. You you have been with us from the start of our radio deal uh, there at WDBO and back when it was ESPN 580. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've appreciated it every time you've been on the show, and we're we're excited every time we see your name as the producer. Uh, not that we don't like the other guys, we like the other guys, <laughs> but. But uh, you just do a stellar job, and I know that you're going to do a great job up there, and, and Jacksonville is lucky to have you. Gosh, I hope so. Because, man, it'd, it'd really suck if I'm just, like, really crappy at that job. It's like, <laughs> what, what do I do now? Like, I think that you're, you're going to gonna make some people laugh. Well, if laugh I, if I am there. crappy up there, I'm definitely going to the UCF job because I might be, you know, I'm unemployed. So who who knows? <laughs> That's the fun. But, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make every effort to try to go to that UCF uh, Boise State game. Well, you're welcome uh, at, at our tailgate. I appreciate so you know. it. Uh, we would be happy to have you. All right. Uh, any final thoughts, Ben? We've had kind of a interesting show. We've gone in a lot of different directions. No, man. I think I think I'm good. Go right, Roger, quickly. Uh, final thought. I hope they remember your name before it's halfway through your report, and uh, so remember to say that at the beginning of it. And otherwise, go Knights. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, I I think that's going to do it for us this evening. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back the same time, same channel next week to uh, hopefully talk to you more about some UCF sports. Uh, Maybe we'll have something better. All righty. I'll talk to you later. Go Knights. Charge on. Charge on. Charge on.